Okay. Yes. Okay. So, hello, good morning eh, for all of you that are following and attending this uh, new Tetakwa seminar. This is the fourth uh, webinar of this uh, webinar series that New Tetakwa is organizing to disseminate the main results, conclusion, and recommendations of the work implemented by the project. A project that uh, is finishing uh, this year, at the end of the of the year. So before we start the webinar, let me briefly introduce you the the project. Hmm? So you are familiar with what the project is aiming and where the funding comes from. Eh? So this is a innovation action eh? funded by the Horizon Twenty Twenty program eh, from, of the European Union in the, the call launch in the 2018-19 called Sustainable European Aquaculture 4.0 Nutrition and Breeding. And there, this important call, four projects were approved and financed. Some of them have already finished and the others are finishing, New Tetaco is finishing at the end of the year and the other I think is uh, finishing beginning of this uh, 2024. So these uh, four projects are the efficiency, intelligent fish feeding through integration of enabling technologies and circular principles, aqua impact, genomic and nutritional innovations for genetically superior farm fish to improve efficiency in European aquaculture, our project, New Tetaqua, new technologies, tools and, and strategies for a sustainable, resilient and innovative European aquaculture, and future EOAQUA, future growth in sustainable, resilient, and climate-friendly, organic, and conventional European aquaculture. So New Tetaqua is a, a project that has a duration of uh, four years, started in January 2020, and is finishing at the end of 2023, yeah, in a few months. It's coordinated by the University of Bologna, and is composed by a 25 uh, partners that are coming for research and development institutions, 11 partners from industry, uh, 11 partners, uh, either from, from uh, there are fish farming companies, uh, aqua feed producers, uh, biotechnology companies, mm -hmm. and also three partners working on exploitation and disseminations. Those are the Federation of European Aquaculture Producers. Green Innovate and Sihian, eh? Sihian, the International Center for eh, <laughs> Agronomic eh, Mediterranean eh, Studies. Mm. So the main objective of eh, New Tetaco has been to expand and diversify aquaculture production of fin fish, mollusk, and microalga by developing and validating technological advanced, resilient, and sustainable applications. Eh? The project has a uh, focus on four of the most important fin fish species, uh, salmon, trout, sea bass, and sea bream, as well as in other emerging new species, uh, amberjack, migre, sole, and mallet. Has worked on two mollusk species, oysters and, mus uh, and mussels, and also in microalgae in three species. In three species. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Well, the, the project was composed of different uh, work packets, uh, working on researching on different disciplines, eh? like uh, technology and uh, information, mm -hmm. farming on nutrition and feeding, genetics and breeding, uh, reproduction of new species, and in the development of uh, new aquaculture products. Mm -hmm. The project has also made a great uh, effort in the dissemination of the generated uh, knowledge. Yeah. So uh, the project, uh, especially at the end of the project, has worked on the organization of different activities, uh, such as the organization of the advanced courses for professionals, training workshops, development of e-learning modules, and the webinar series that is uh, what uh, we are today. Eh, in the fourth webinar of uh, this uh, series. Eh. This is the, the program, the, a very intense program for the webinars that we are organizing in the month of October. 
starting with the webinar that uh, we are holding today on new organic feeds for affordable, sustainable. And you see the, the list of the forthcoming uh, webinar. And today's we organize uh, a webinar about circular aquafit ingredients for sustainable aquaculture. Next week, uh, a webinar, the 11th of October, about the use of natural functional diets to prevent spiritually infection in Sibrin. The 18th of October, a webinar on the reproduction and broodstock management of migre. The 20th of October, a webinar on the reproduction and broodstock management of greater amberjack. And we finish the, men the month of October with the organization of a webinar about a new broodstock management software that the project has implemented. Uh, the project, as I told you, is finishing at the end of the year, and in the month of October, the 15th of October, we are organizing the final conference, for which uh, you are invited uh, to attend if, if, well, if it's possible for, for you. Um, before I pass the, the word to Luca, to Luca Parma, uh, let me explain you what is going to be the dynamic of this, of this webinar. Yeah, so we are going to have a, a set of uh, different presentations where we are going to share with you main results selected for this webinar in relation with the topic of the of the webinar. The presentations are going the presentations are going consecutive, and then at the end we will have a some time uh, reserved for questions and debate. So for for all of you that are attending the the webinar. If you have questions, you can start to, to write your questions using the questions and answer and answers tool eh, that the Zoom tool has. Eh? So you just go there. There is also a, a tool that is chat, but this is just for internal communication and and uh, and, and also trying to well and for technical problems. Eh? And I'm not sure that is working properly. Eh? So for the questions and answer, use the questions and answer tool. Okay. So I look at you wish I can stop sharing the screen and then I pass you the, the word, the floor. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bernardo. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. So my name is Luca Palma. I work for the, for, uh, in the University of Bologna as a fish nutritionist and um, I will briefly introduce the work pack to one that's uh, has been developed in in the project, and uh, the, the main objective of the work package uh, one was uh, to to develop solution in uh, for feed application. The first uh, task was uh, to improve fish shells, uh, reduce spiricotil uh, infection in Sibriu through natural functional uh, diet. Not another major objective was uh, also to promote uh, byproduct valorization, including innovative uh, free catch fish meal diet, in this case uh, for European sea bass. And then <clears throat> we also develop organic uh, low fish meal aquafit in, uh, in conventional and magic species. That would be the objective of, uh, of today. And also, we let's say, including a micro microbiome application to enhance fish health of farm species. In the work package one, um, it, it was uh, really highlighted the, the importance of the collaboration with uh, industry. So, in this work package, uh, Research Center, University of Bologna, and IRTA have worked in close collaboration to industry partner, including. Uh, with the company, Veronesi and Irida, and farm uh, uh, company, Chromaris and uh, Galaxy. Very quick, uh, the, the, all the methodology that were applied in this work package was uh, based on trial that were conducted in uh, laboratory uh, lab scale condition and then the outcome of the lab scale condition were all validated in field trial. In this case, for uh, pro health field uh, to, in, to reduce the infection in spiricotiri to Sibrim, the result will be presented the 11th of October uh, in the webinar. Then, in the second uh, trial, the zero waste uh, trial, 
to include by product from fishing and aquaculture, also work uh, in state collaboration with uh, with company and all the feed were developed to be uh, to be used in real farming condition. In this case, uh, those response in European uh, sea bass were tested in laboratory condition and then validated in field trial. The result of uh, this task will be presented uh, Thursday, 5th of October. And then in another task uh, on organic, we develop in we test and develop innovative organic raw material in, and was mainly worked in street collaboration from IRTA, IRIDA, and, and Ghana City. And the result will be presented uh, today in the webinar. Yes, just to introduce the, the importance of, uh, of organic aquaculture, New Tech Aqua has evaluated uh, New novel organic plant ingredient that's the, the availability of organic uh, raw material for feed is considered one of the most important bottlenecks for the development of organic uh, fin fish. And um, that it, it was successfully reached uh, thanks to the close collaboration due to uh, research center and uh, industrial company. The first uh, speaker will be Alicia Steves from Hirta. She will present the result uh, of a trial carried out using organic pea and seaweeds as ingredient for sea bream and random herbal trout. Then Feli Vasilaki from Hirida, she will uh, introduce uh, the use of novel raw material in the formulation for aqua feed suitable for uh, organic uh, production. We will move uh, with uh, Stelios Carapanojotis from uh, Galaxy de Marine Farm, and he will present the, the result of the validation trial uh, conducted in Galaxy D with, in Sibrim in a large scale condition. Lastly, we thank uh, Lem Giuseppe Lembro from Coispa that uh, he accepted our invitation to to make an overview of the regulatory and technical barriers for the implementation of organic aquaculture. And this result uh, were conducted in the sister project, uh, Future Aqua. And uh, so I would like to thank also all the speakers and the attendees for uh, the webinar. And, uh, and hopefully we will have a, a good discussion during uh, the webinar. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Luca. So, yes, it's okay. So, Alicia? Yeah, I will start sharing my... Mm -hmm. uh, this is this one, I think so. Do you have it? Can yes. you see? Yes. Yeah? Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm Alicia Estevez from IRTA. I have been working with this... Uh, these new uh, ingredients for organic feeds and uh, the use in uh, experimental uh, trial with cibrium and, and trout uh, as models for marine and freshwater fish and then an, at an, an industrial level. Uh, sorry, it's not going. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now. The first, uh, I'm going to present what is the, uh, the EU regulation regarding organic production. I know that we are going to talk to, to, to show this uh, several times uh, because I, I, I already put it here just as an introduction and also Feli will also explain what is organic production. In, uh, in general, it's uh, a way of produ producing food, uh, not only fish, but also agriculture and animal production. Uh, in, in, using the best environmental practices uh, with high level of bio, biodiversity, the preservation of natural resources, uh, animal welfare uh, of high quality, and production methods that uh, cover the, the, the requirements of certain consumers that, are, that like this kind of, of food. Uh, organic production uh, play a dual role uh, providing uh, specific uh, products for the market and, and 
covering the demand of, of consumers and also uh, protects the, the environment and animal welfare. So uh, somehow uh, okay. we, uh, with organic production, we, we are trying to, to be sustainable and protecting the environment, use uh, the methods, better methods to produce uh, good food. In the, in the European Union, uh, the production has experienced a lot of increase from 20, uh, the, the year 2015 to 2020. In increasing from uh, to uh, almost uh, seventy four thousand tons, uh, that is uh, around six four percent of the total uh, aquaculture production. Uh, the main producer is Ireland, uh, mostly producing mussels, and then followed by Italy and France. Uh, the main species produced are mussel, uh, salmon, uh, trout, carp oysters, and then at the end, sea bass and sea bream. Uh, and the main producers in this case are uh, Greece, Italy, Spain, and France. Uh, and regarding the nutrition, that is, uh, is something that we are covering today, there are, uh, according to the law, to the European regulation, the sourcing of the, of the feed ingredients are, are mostly organic feed products for aquaculture origin, fish meal and fish oil from organic aquaculture trimmings, fish meal and fish oil derived from trimmings of fish caught by uh, sustainable fisheries, and organic feed ingredients of plant origin, but included only at a maximum of 60% in the feeds. In 2014, there was a, an amendment of the regulation, and they uh, consider also to, to increase the fish meal and fish oil derived from, uh, from fish caught in sustainable fisheries, uh, include uh, istidine uh, for salmonids, uh, includes uh, uh, supplementary feeds for crustaceans, uh, including fish meal and fish oil for sustainable fisheries, and also adding cholesterol to the shrimp's diet to, to favor the, the, the molting process in the, in the crustaceans. So these are uh, amendments that uh, are introduced in the, last, uh, in, the, in the last regulation. Regarding the gaps that we st still have is that the uh, organic uh, feed products from aquaculture tri uh, trimmings, uh, uh, origin and trimmings, uh, are available in very limited qualities, uh, quantities. And also uh, trimmings, uh, that means skeleton and viscera, contain uh, very high levels of phosphorus and low quantity of protein. So the trimmings are not a well-defined product and not a well, uh, a, a good product uh, to be included only as the main ingredient. So there they are variation in protein content, uh, there are low lipid content, a uh, high mineral, uh, mineral content, high phosphorus. So, and also trimmings cannot be used for the same species. You cannot use trimmings from salmon to feed salmon. So it's uh, something that is, is very clear in the, in the regulation. Uh, the organic feed material of plant origin uh, can be included only at maximum 60% uh, inclusion and have, uh, needs to have an, an, an uh, adequate amino acid profile. Uh, no, have a, an, an inadequate amino acid profile. So you need to uh, include other amino acids from other sources, not synthetic because they are not allowed. Uh, uh, plant proteins and also can contain anti-nutrients. Phosphorus content is very low and might have an environmental impact. In plant oils contain only short chain you know, omega 3 puffa and carnivorous fish long needs a, a lot of quantity of this uh, long chain polyunsaturated fatty acids. So they are uh, these uh, challenges that we have to, to cover. So they, we need to uh, introduce new species, new, new new sources for the for the composition of the feeds. So we have to diversify the basket, and uh, some can be or bacteria, fungi, or algae, process animal protein, those PAPs, the PAP that are well known uh, for feed formulation, uh, and also insect meal that uh, are considered new innovative food and contain a uh, high protein content, a good amino acid profile, and PUFA content like marine macroalgae. In other cases, uh, also waste can be used as, as, uh, as, a, as a substrate. So we need uh, to diversify the basket because they, there are not uh, so much ingredients available. 
So and we also need to uh, develop alternative oils, uh, diet sources like uh, EPA and DHA because there are not many sources for this uh, launching uh, polyunsaturated fatty acids. And uh, also uh, including the recycling wasters as a resource for the for feed formulation. In new tech aqua, we are uh, we have used a new novel ingredient uh, derived from uh, green pea, organic green pea, green pea protein that have uh, selected by Irida and Irida later will will uh, explain why they selected this, this uh, two ingredients organic pea and sea bass, and sea uh, seaweeds. Uh, is, um, let's see what is the uh, sorry <laughs> that's for film innovation that I, I, I did the photograph before is as for film innovation known also as health is uh, has a very good uh, quality at, at health levels they they induce in immuno it's an immuno stimulant for the fish so uh, we use this uh, these formulations uh, for rainbow trout and billhead sea bream as models for uh, freshwater and marine fish. And the inclusion of pea protein was different between them. And in the case of rainbow trout, pea protein was included at 10 and 21.5%. 20, and for sea bream was included at 8.5 and 19%. We carried out the, uh, the trials in IRTA during two, week, uh, two months uh, uh, with the, in, uh, following all the recommendation of the organic production, that means with open flow conditions, no addition of oxygen, a uh, temperature, uh, a na almost natural temperature, and uh, 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 how can I say, the a low uh, final density that must be um, at maximum 20 kilos per cubic meter, following the EU regulations, all of this. So the fees were sampled at the beginning, but at the end of the trial. And during the trial, we, uh, we uh, give them a certain amount of feed and also collect the feed not eaten and uh, to, to calculate the conversion rate. Uh, so we 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 uh, had the uh, specific growth rate, a uh, relative growth rate, food conversion rate, and the hepatosomatic and viscerosomatic indices, and the uh, fillet geo. So at the end, uh, these are the results. The growth was uh, in, the, in the case of Cibrium was better using the control control feed. The control feed was also organic feed, of course, a commercial organic feed also from Irida. And in the case of uh, P inclusion, uh, the growth was very similar between uh, 8.5 and 19%, but the food conversion was much better with the P protein included at 8.5%. And there were no differences in somatic and uh, hepatosomatic and viscerosomatic indices. And the fillet yield was much higher, although not uh, significantly different, but it was much higher when the P was included at 8.5%. In the case of rainbow trout, uh, again, the, the best uh, growth was obtained with the control fish, uh, the control feed uh, commercial uh, organic feed, uh, but it was very similar or it was not significantly different with the P included at 10%. In this case, uh, the uh, food conversion was also higher a, a better with the P included at 10%, and there were no differences in the pathosomatic indexes, although the viscerosomatic index was higher when the P was included. Uh, well, after this, after having all these, uh, uh, these uh, uh, results, we also uh, analyzed the quality of the fillet because it is what is going to go to the, to the customer. So we analyzed the content protein in lipid uh, and uh, the profile in fatty acids of both uh, the fillet and the, 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 the liver. In the case of fillet, uh, rainbow trout fillet and also ilhet sibrin fillet had a, a higher protein uh, and a lower uh, a lipid level uh, when the P was included, especially in the case of, of sibrin. There was a higher and increase in the protein content and a decrease in the in the lipid content of the of the fillet, and the profile of the of the fatty acid was uh, closer to the to the to the uh, composition of the feed, although the uh, entry profile was highest in the in the uh, in the fillet, including pea protein. In the case of rainbow trout, the the protein was uh, not as high as in the case of of uh, the with the pea was included, and there was no uh, well there was a slight 
a decrease in the in the lipid or in the fillet, and the composition of the of the fatty acids reflected the composition of the of the feed. After this, uh, we transfer. We we consider that the best inclusion level for king pea protein in the Greek sibling feed was 8.5%, and that feed was also ex uh, uh, examined the, the effect of this, this feed at industrial level. At industrial level, the experiment was carried out in Galaxy uh, Marine Farm, and uh, uh, what we did was just analyze the liver and the fillet of the feed of the fish that after the, the, the growing period. Uh, the growing period in this case was higher, where they were not no for, uh, two months, but uh, much higher because they, they reached the commercial the commercial weight at the end of the of the trial, and the uh, the the uh, this was reflected also in the composition of the fillet. So the the pea protein uh, the, the the content of protein uh, and the in lipids in the in the control at, and the organic pea was very similar. Uh, and the, both in the in the liver and the fillet, and the composition of fatty acids in, in in the experimental trial there was an increase in omega three PUFA, but in this case in the experiment in the sorry in the industrial trial this increase in N three PUFA was not observed. What we found was a higher content of oleic acid and also linoleic acid, acid the eighteen to N six. So there was a, a slight differences in the in the uh, between the experimental trial and the industrial trial, but in any case, the growth was was good, and the composition of the fillet was also considered good. So the, the conclusions of the of the trial uh, uh, show that the yeah, at industrial level, and probably because of the higher final weight of the fish, the lipid accumulation in muscle and liver was higher, and the accumulation of entropy was a uh, uh, higher but not as high as uh, when when we did the trial in the at experimental level so as a general conclusion the inclusion of this organic pea protein at low level did not produce any effect on the growth and or composition of the fish although it's a uh, slightly it's lower content of DH, dsa and antipufa were observed in the muscle in the at industrial level but in, ge in general the inclusion of this organic pea protein at low level uh, had a bit the, the growth similar to what is found with the control feed and the composition of the of the fish, although with the lower content of DHA and N3 PUFA, uh, it, they were in the levels uh, that were can be accepted by the consumer. So it, the, the inclusion of these green people protein is uh, can be done perfectly well. So and um, these are some. Uh, uh, references that we have used, and uh, we already had published uh, the results of this. Uh, this results uh, the, the results in the of the trials carried out in the in IRTA in this journal in the, the aquaculture journal. Okay, so you can have access to the results, uh, but because they are already published, and mm -hmm. the questions uh, will be whenever you. I will check if there are any questions. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Alicia. So yeah. we, we continue with the presentation. So Let please me, yes. stop Let sharing. Me. So uh, next speaker is Feli Basilaki from Irida, eh, who is going to make a presentation about the cannot, use of... You can I'm sorry, no, I cannot go to the... Okay. Oh no, I, no, I, yeah. I, I took it out. <laughs> yeah, perfect, thank okay. you. Then, uh, okay, I switch off my... Yeah, then Feli Vasilaki is your time to make your presentation about the uh, use of novel raw materials in the formulation of aquafits for organic production. Can you it's, see my screen? Yes, but we see it in the working mode, not in the presentation mode. Could you please try to... Um... No, but you need to select the presentation. We see the PowerPoint, but in the working, in the working, not in the. Uh, I have chose the presentation mode. This is a presentation mode. Uh, so, but maybe you need to stop, and then when sharing the screen, selecting the. The presentation mode, not the PowerPoint. On okay, no, it's no, it's now? okay. Perfect. No, it's okay. Perfect. So please Perfect. go go ahead. Thank you. 
Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Feli Vasilaki, and I would, I would like to welcome you all uh, to today's webinar. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizers and all the partners of New Tech Aqua project. I'm uh, here today to talk to you about the use of novel raw materials in the formulation of aquafit suitable for organic production. Uh, I will start by saying a few words about Irida and my own background. Irida is an aquafit company based in Greece, founded in 2008. Early in 2010, was certified for the production of its feed suitable for organic aquaculture. Irida has two factories uh, with four production lines uh, based in the west part of Greece, and the 6% of our total production belongs to the organics. Our activities include the design, production, and distribution of feeds, mainly for Mediterranean species, such as uh, Siba, Sibrim, Pagrus, Migra, and Greater Amberjack, as well as for freshwater species, such as trout. Also, we develop and distribute certified feeds suitable for organic production of uh, bass, brim, trout, and shrimp. Uh, I'm the R&D manager of the company. I hold a bachelor's degree in marine sciences and an MSc degree in aquatic pathobiology. Uh, I'm responsible for the management of all the R&D activities. And my main focus is on uh, new uh, raw material usage, new product development and product reformulation. Today, I will present you briefly uh, the situation of uh, organic aquaculture in Europe and more precisely in Greece then the scope of the work package that we were involved in New Tech Aqua, uh, the idea behind the design of feeds suitable for organic production, the novel raw materials we have used, and finally the novel diets for rainbow trout, migra, and sea brim that were designed and tested. Uh, organic farming is one of the most uh, challenging food production sectors in Europe, based on the four principles of health, ecology, fairness, and care and combines tradition, innovation, and science to benefit both environment and the consumers. In the case of organic aquaculture, and according to the last UMOFA report in 2022, the total production at EU is estimated at uh, uh, 74,000 tons, and uh, that belongs to 6.4% uh, of the total EU aquaculture production. The main species that are produced are mussels, followed by salmon, trout, carp, oyster, European sea bass, and sea bream. From 2010 to 2019, and among the 27 EU member states, an important progression in organic aquaculture production was observed, while in Greece, the increase was at 24%. Within the EU, organic production of uh, sea bass and sea bream represents 1.5% of the total production of both species. And Greece has the highest organic production of these species, uh, which in 2020 amounted uh, 1,500 tons. As you can see on the table below, from 2015 to 2020, the production of those species was doubled. Uh, on New Tech Aqua project, we were involved on Work Package 1, Feed and Feeding Strategies, where uh, we evaluated novel raw materials uh, in order to reduce fish milk content in trout, sea brims, and migris diets. These diets were fed uh, to trout and sea brim at IRTAS facilities and to migr at Unibos facilities under organic conditions. In the case of Sibrim, and based on the results uh, we got from IRTA, the best of the two experimental Sibrim diets was validated in the sea cages of Galaxy the Marine Farms in order to check the results on an industrial scale. A full growing season was carried out under standard farming conditions. Uh, the cages were in duplicates, and the analytical procedures that were followed were growth, feed conversion, and economical feed efficiency. About the feeds that are suitable for organic production, uh, the, main cons the major constraint on increasing organic aquaculture production is the cost of the organic certified raw materials. 
there are key restrictions that are rising out of the EU regulations. And one of them is that the maximum level of inclusion of plant proteins is 60% of the total ingredients. Also, the lack of organic certified raw materials, which are suitable for uh, uh, the organic production, uh, makes difficult to well balance the diets. The shortage of fish meal uh, forced the certification bodies to revise the EU regulations and allow fish meal and fish oil derived from sustainable fisheries to be used in organic feeds. There is a need of, for raw materials with high levels of essential amino acids and lipids in order to uh, meet the requirement of each species. In general, alternative protein sources can totally or partially replace the fish meal and reduce the feed costs and improve sustainability. Uh, three novel raw materials were used uh, in this study. First of all, organic pea protein, which is produced by fine grinding the diluted peas into pea flour, followed by air processing, which separates the particles based on differences in size and density. Pea protein has higher protein and lower carbohydrate and anti-nutritional factor contents compared with unprocessed peas, but still it has a significant starch content. In general, in extruded diets, starch comes from wheat, which is a primary component responsible for the binding properties and expansion of the pellets. Therefore, pea protein can serve both as a protein and starch source. The second novel raw material that was studied was, brown sea, was a brown seaweed, Ascophilum nodosum. Seaweeds are photosynthetic multicellular aquatic organisms that can be found in almost every aquatic environment in all areas. Their active compounds include polysaccharides, various phytochemicals, carotenoids, minerals, peptides, and lipids. The low levels of protein and the high mineral context inhibits their use as a major replacement uh, of protein sources in aquafeeds. Here you can see the nutritional profile of Ascophilum nodosum, where you can see that fiber is quite high, 51%, but based on the vitamin and mineral analysis of this raw material, we can say that this material can be used as a functional ingredient because it can improve the immunological response of the fish, increase the antioxidant activity, and improve the stress responses. The third novel raw material that was tested is organic yeast. Yeast is formed from the collection of the ketoplasmic contents of the yeast cell. It has a high protein content, more than 50% crude protein in dry weight basis, and it's balanced in terms of amino acids. It's a research of nucleosides, and studies have shown that the growth in FCR were improved by yeast concentration at levels between 4 and 8% in the feed. Those positive effects on health, in addition to its direct role, can characterize this ingredient as a functional ingredient. Three uh, diets, uh, diets in New Tech Aqua were designed for three different species, rainbow trout, migr, and sea brim. Regarding the diets of uh, rainbow trout, two experimental diets were designed with 46% crude protein and 60% of crude lipid. Almost 50% of fish meal was replaced from organic yeast and pea protein. Regarding the diets for migr, uh, three experimental diets were designed and fish meal was replaced uh, again maximum at 50% with pea protein, yeast and seaweed. The diets were all with 46% crude protein and 60% lipid. Finally, the diets for sea brim had 45% protein and 16% lipid. Two experimental diets were designed, and again, 50% of fish meal was replaced by the novel uh, ingredients. After my presentation, Mr. Stelius Karapanayotis from Galaxy the Marine Farm will give a presentation regarding the validation of novel organic feed for sea brim in large scale field trials. 
In conclusion, there's a need to find new raw materials which are certified for organic production. And we need a bigger range of these raw materials to be tested under farm condition in order to reduce the reliance on fish meal. This will enable us also to reduce the cost of the organic certified fish feeds because fish feeds uh, are the 70% Fish feeds cost is the 70% of the total production cost in uh, organic aquaculture. That's all from me. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, uh, Felis. Uh, I, uh, I would like to remember uh, attendees that they can start to write their questions eh, in the questions and answer tool. Eh? So we will be taking notes of your questions eh, for the coordination of the final de debate eh, that we have at the end. So thank you, Feli Vasilaki. We continue and now is the time for Estelios Karapaganoliotis from Galaxidi Marine Farm. Eh? Good morning. Good morning. Let me share my screen. Mm -hmm. Can you see my presentation? Yeah, I think it's coming. It is already on the screen. Please go, go ahead. Okay. Uh, good morning from me as well. Uh, what I'm going to present as Feli and Alicia for me told you is that uh, I'm going to present the validation of uh, one of the novel organic feeds uh, for the sebum in large scale two trials. Uh, I'm a biologist that studied in the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. What my thesis and my internship were around uh, uh, broodstock and co-culture. Uh, I galaxy in the in the context of uh, diversify project in 2017, and since 2019, I am in the R&D department as a regular employee, uh, working with European and national funded programs as well as the bidding program of the company. And I'm finishing my masters in the Agricultural University of Athens. Uh, what the learning objectives of this uh, presentation are is to evaluate actually how did the new organic feed perform uh, in an actual uh, fish farm environment uh, to the control diet and the target audience is uh, other farmers or feed companies. So uh, a quick view of my presentation, a small introduction, uh, validation trials, results, and conclusions. Uh, a few words about Galaxy Marine Farm. It was established in 1987 in Galaxy, a place near Delphi, uh, in Phokis. Uh, it's one of the oldest companies in Greece. Uh, it's fully integrated, owning, owning its own hatcheries and broodstock one of which is dedicated to organic production, uh, nine farm sites across the Corinthian Gulf, uh, one of which is uh, dedicated to organic production and uh, its own packaging station. Uh, and the species that uh, grow in our farms are mainly Sibrin, Siba, Spagrus, and Migu, and one extra species, uh, the Great Rambujag, which is more like uh, still getting it. Not established. This is the position of Galaxy V in this and the Corinthian Gap, just for your information. And this is a, a view of Galaxy V Sport, it's quite picturesque. Uh, so, in, in package one, uh, we were involved in subtask 1.3.2, which is the validation of the trial, as we said, and I fairly already mentioned. So, for the trials, uh, the trial, the scope of the trial was to uh, test this feed that was developed and formulated by Ida and Ita, and it was produced uh, in the premises of Irida's uh, factory. And then against another feed that was also formulated and produced by Irida that acted as the control feed. The objectives were to compare and evaluate the production indices, namely growth, survival, FCR, uh, and later on, by the end of uh, the trial, to provide the samples to ITA for further analysis, as Alicia already determined. Uh, 
So the setup as described in the declaration of work was to test the feed in Sebring from 100 to two to 300 grams, excuse me, uh, in a duplicate, which means two cages per diet. And the feed fish were supposed to be reared as organic. What does that mean, supposed? Because the experimental farm unit in, in our company uh, is not the organic one, the conventional one, but those two cages per feed were treated as organic, meaning that the nets were organic, the feeds, of course, were organic, the densities, etc. So, uh, in the methodology, from 0 to 100 grams, which were not fed uh, experimental diets, they had to be reared in common, and they were fed commercial organic feeds, uh, a product produced by IRDA. The fish were stocked 30,000 fish at uh, and a stocking weight of seven grams. Uh, they were stocked in the beginning of July 21, and three samplings took place, one in uh, almost 50 grams, one in 100, and uh, then we organized the splitting. Uh, the day of the splitting, the weight was 122 grams. The second part, which is the actual experiment, uh, is from 100 to 300. As mentioned before, two cages per feed, E1 and E2, were fed the control diet, and E3 and E4 were fed the D1 experimental diet, which, as mentioned before, is the one with 8.5 uh, protein. The feeding was performed once per day, and the amount of feed is determined based on uh, tables that correlate the average weight of the fish with the current temperature. Uh, this is the day of the splitting, you can see in the table. Uh, the 30,000 fish that remain fish were split almost equally with a small, small exception, but we think it's a little bit split. And these are the four samplings, the four weight samplings uh, that took place with the final one being uh, mid-July 22, almost a year later than the study. So uh, the result for information, this is the the curve of the temperature, the the temperature of the average temperature of the unit, uh, of the farm unit, starting from July 21 to July 22, with gray color being the common ring when 30,000 fish were all together, and with green color, you see uh, the split cages, the period where the cages were split. Uh, this is the growth curve. Uh, with blue colors, again, you see the two cages that were fed control diet, and with green color, you see the cages that were fed with the organic D1 diet. This is a, a zoom. Uh, we can see that sometime in May, the, the the control diets lag behind, but they easily caught up the difference later on. And this is uh, the table. I know it seems a little chaotic, but it's it's not. Uh, the feed consumed is uh, pretty much the same because, as I told before, the feed were administered using tables. And since the weight difference and the temperature were almost the same, uh, the feed administered is the same. A small difference in biomass due to small differences in the final average weight, we, which we can see in the experimental cases was 2.5% bigger. The SGR is practically the same, the mortality is the same, and also FCR, uh, you can see there is a difference between economic FCR and biological FCR, as we say here in the company, which economic is fit consumed divided by the difference in biomass, while the biological takes into account the value as well, and it's a more accurate uh, estimate of FCR regarding the growth of the fish itself, but not the cost. That's the difference. In both, uh, in both two cases, economic and biological, the difference between the indices is uh, 2.6, which means that the experimental diets performed 
percent better in terms of conversion than uh, uh, the control diets. Here you can see the same table in graphs, which is the same, uh, a little bit higher the, the biomass gained by the experimental cages. The final weight a little small, a little uh, smaller uh, in the control cages. The SGR is practically the same. The mortality is pretty much the same, and uh, the FCR in the experimental cages uh, is a little uh, lower in the experimental cases, which is something good. So to conclude, there were not significant differences between the groups and the organic diet performed uh, slightly better, uh, which if, if you take a look at the graphs and tables, you may be tempted to think that the organic diet didn't perform uh, that good. But uh, you have taken into account that this is an alternative and uh, it, it performed actually slightly better without causing trouble with it, uh, without causing trouble to the growth of the fish. So, our recommendations, if we can say, that uh, if those raw ingredients are easy and available to find in large quantities and if they're cost effective uh, and if they can be uh, incorporated into the production. It would be to to our best benefit to try these feeds again, like uh, in house, uh, in even larger industrial scale trials with with uh, hundred and tens and maybe hundreds of thousands of fish in large cages. Uh, as I said uh, before, uh, we by the end of the project, well, by the end of the trials in. Uh, Mid July 22, we shipped samples to IRTA for further analysis of the fatty acids, composition, etc. Uh, five fish from each cage. We weigh them individually, remove the liver and one of the two fillets, and ship them to IRTA. Thank you very much. Uh, the questions will follow later. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Stelios. Uh, so we continue. Uh, we arrive to uh, the last, well, the final presentation of this session, which is going to be made uh, by Giuseppe uh, Lembo uh, from COISPA, Technology and Researcher. And he's going to talk about regulatory and technical barriers for the implementation of organic aquaculture. Uh, Results from a sister project, eh? the project Future e Aqua. So, uh, Giuseppe, please. Uh, sorry, you need to activate your microphone. Oh, yes, sorry. Good morning to everybody. Good can morning. you hear me? Yes, very well. And you can also see my yes. screen. Yes. Okay, uh, let me start uh, thanking uh, all, all my colleagues of uh, New Tech Aqua uh, project uh, who invited me to, to give this short presentation about regulatory and technical barrier for the implementation of the organic aquaculture, which is based mainly on some preliminary results from a, a new project that is called uh, Organic Target EU. Uh, my name is uh, Giuseppe Lembo. I'm the chair of the Fondazione uh, COISPA. Uh, I've been uh, in the past chair of the expert group for technical advice on, on the organic production of the European Commission. And uh, COISPA is a research institute uh, that works in, in the field of fishery and aquaculture. Well, uh, I'm going to, to give a very short introduction to the, the new organic uh, regulation and then um, an overview uh, of the enabling and constraining factor for the development of the organic aquaculture in, in the EU. Okay. Uh, where we are. Uh, the, the Council Regulation uh, uh, 834 that was uh, 
made in 2007 was the first uh, uh, regulation in which organic aquaculture was mentioned. But we had to, to wait uh, until 2009 in order to have the regulation uh, uh, 710 that was entirely um, explaining how to uh, perform the organic aquaculture. So, as you can see, this was uh, many, many years after the first regulation on the agric organic agriculture that was in the, we, we can say, in the last century, in the 91. After, after 10 years, uh, we have now uh, the new organic uh, regulation that uh, was approved in 2018 and uh, entered in force in 2022. We have no time to enter, of course, into the details of, the, uh, of this regulation. We can just very, very briefly list the, uh, the main topics that are covered by the, the regulation. Uh, there are, of course, uh, requirements for the uh, aquaculture fish, and uh, there are there is a part which uh, is related to the conversion rules that means the procedure to convert from a, a conventional aquaculture to an organic aquaculture. Then there are rules on the uh, origin of the uh, aquaculture animals and breeding uh, procedure that means uh, uh, rules on the uh, reproduction uh, practices, uh, uh, juvenile uh, reading and, and so on. There is a large part uh, that is more related to the uh, current uh, uh, webinar that is related to nutrition rules. And uh, in this case, there are specific rules that are for uh, carnivorous uh, uh, feed for carnivorous uh, uh, fish. And then there is another part which is related to other kind of aquaculture animal mainly freshwater shrimps and, and uh, other specific case. Then there is the, the, uh, the, the part of the regulation that is related to the health care. And this, in this part, there are also rules on uh, disease uh, uh, prevention, uh, biosecurity, uh, vet veterinary treatment that are allowed uh, and uh, limits uh, on the use of uh, such kind of treatment, and in general, the care of the animal welfare. Uh, the last part is related in general, but is a, a large part on the house, housing and husbandry uh, practices. Like for uh, uh, fish, there are also production rules for mollusks and, uh, and for algae. What is new in this, in this regulation? Uh, the, the main aspect is related to the fact that now it is much more difficult to make uh, uh, amendment to the regulation because uh, there are few uh, parts that uh, in, in which the commission is allowed to adopt so-called delegates acts uh, uh, that can amend part of the regulation. Uh, and are specifically listed, uh, as you can see in this slide, for example, in relation to feed for carnivorous uh, and other uh, aquaculture animal, veterinary treatment, and uh, broodstock uh, management. And even in the case of uh, uh, amendment uh, on these topics, uh, the Commission needs to have the uh, previous uh, agreement of the council and of the uh, parliament. So you, you may understand that uh, it is now much more difficult to, to have uh, amendment uh, on, the, on this regulation. A few figures on, on the uh, current state of the organic aquaculture. I will be very briefly because already Alicia and, and Feli gave you some <clears throat> some number about this um, about the uh, european production 
uh, as uh, Alicia said, the, the main producing country in, in Europe are Ireland, Italy, French, Netherlands. Then there is uh, Spain, uh, Germany, uh, Denmark, and, and, and other with, with less number. But what I would like to point out and to highlight you is that uh, in the case of Ireland, uh, practically uh, almost 50% of the aquaculture production is organic, which is a, 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 huge, a huge percentage. Uh, while, for example, in Italy, that is the, the second uh, producer organic in Europe, only uh, about 8% of the uh, organic production um, of, the, of the total uh, production is represented by the uh, organic uh, production. Uh, if, you, if, we, if you look at the uh, different species, you can see that mussel are the, uh, the species, uh, uh, the most uh, produced organic species that is followed by salmon, trout, carp, oyster, and uh, European sea bass and uh, uh, gilded sea bream. But again, uh, mussel, that is the, the most produced species, uh, represent only 10% of the global uh, muscle production, while, for example, salmon represent uh, almost seventy-five percent of the uh, convention of yes of the total production of of these species. While the other species are uh, percentage that are more negligible. So, in conclusion, uh, we, we can say that. Uh, uh, the uh, organic aquaculture grew from 2015 to 2020 almost 60 percent and in 2020 represented uh, about seven percent of the total uh, aquaculture production but we had a huge increase of the muscle production uh, and oyster production, so mussels, so, uh, um, mollusks, while the other species, uh, as you can see, uh, were uh, less 1% for salmon, eight, less 8% 8 for trout, less 49% for carps, and uh, uh, only uh, Sibas and Sibrim grew 38%. Uh, now, what, what is the, uh, the, the, the new is that uh, uh, the commission launched the so-called uh, farm to fork strategy. And uh, in this farm to fork strategy, uh, it was uh, st stated that the new objective is to reach by 2030, a significant increase in the organic aquaculture. And this is why uh, we uh, try to, to see how we, uh, we can boost organic farming and uh, organic aquaculture toward this uh, uh, target of the uh, farm to fork. And uh, we uh, analyzed uh, the constraining factor and the enabling factor to, to the development of the uh, organic aquaculture. Uh, through a, a meta-analysis of the available literature on this issue. We followed the, uh, the so-called PRISMA approach. We went through the uh, web of science and scopus to select uh, uh, scientific literature on the organic aquaculture, but we also uh, tried try to found uh, gray, gray literature and other document, national document. And uh, by a, a, a procedure of, of selection, at the end, uh, we arrived to a final selection of 82 documents that uh, were considered relevant uh, on the topics of the organic aquaculture. 
Um, in this slide, you can see uh, that this, this document were mainly found after 2009. And uh, mostly of them were uh, in relation to Europe, uh, then Asia, and the other, the other country uh, came behind with, with the less, less number. So mostly of the document com were coming from the EU. Uh, if we see uh, the document in relation of, of the different uh, species that uh, were uh, treated, uh, most of them uh, did not specify the, the, the species. That means were, were in general on the organic aquaculture, while uh, um, those of uh, CBAS were the most uh, uh, relevant, followed by Sibrim uh, and uh, Carps and, and the other followed. Well, what, what, we, what we did, uh, we tried to, uh, to find uh, the impact factor. Uh, we, we mean uh, for impact factor, those factors that are supporting or constraining the development of the aquaculture. And we try to, to find those impact factor into those documents. We selected um, 40 specific impact factor. Uh, just I, I can give you an example of uh, what were these impact factor. For example, uh, the availability of organically produced inputs or the uh, accessibility to the organic markets. Uh, or the availability of the advice, education, and, and training, uh, or the uh, availability of research and technical solution for the innovation, uh, and, and so on. And we uh, classified um, such factor, impact factor, are supporting, or very supporting, or constraining, or very constraining. And we uh, made an, a quantitative analysis of all these uh, these factors, I, I, I am going to going to to, to give you just a a short um, presentation of the results uh, in relation to the top six supporting factors that we found. Uh, the, the most important was the uh, consumer demand and uh, willingness. To buy that was considered one of the most important uh, supporting factor. Then uh, the uh, possibility, the presence of uh, marketing strategy for the organic products. Then the accessibility to to market uh, campaigns. And uh, uh, at the end, uh, uh, the need of uh, research toward technical solution and um, the presence of incentives and um, premium price for farmer or subsidy uh, for, for farmer and uh, subsidy also for consumer. Uh, these were the, the, the most relevant supporting factor. While the uh, most relevant, uh, the, the top six uh, concerning factor were the uh, quality requirement for the organic uh, uh, products and uh, associated cost. Uh, the, the example is uh, has been uh, made today with the presentation of my colleagues, uh, because, for example, one of the uh, important uh, concerning factor is the price of the feed, the quality, and, and the price of the uh, feed for the organic products. Uh, then the price difference between organic and conventional products. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it, it is uh, natural to consider that uh, an organic products require a special care and also needs to, to have a different price from the conventional one. And so 
this difference between organic and conventional product uh, is extremely important as a constraining factor. Then there are problems related to the uh, uh, bureaucracy, uh, aquaculture uh, rules uh, and regulation, and also uh, to some extent the cost of the certification scheme costs. The lack of awareness and knowledge about organic aquaculture practices and the uh, added value that can uh, bring the organic aquaculture and uh, the uh, unavailability of incentives, uh, as we said before, and the unavailability of organically produced inputs. Uh, what, what means uh, unavailability of organic producing inputs? For example, organic juvenile. Uh, currently, the uh, EU regulation requires that the whole production cycle should be under organic management. That means that also juvenile should be organic. And uh, there are very, very few uh, farms which currently produce uh, um, organic juveniles, and, and this is a, a, a problem, is a, an availability of organically produced inputs. Uh, to some extent, uh, the same may be for, for, for the feed and for other uh, uh, input of the, of the production. Well, uh, in conclusion, uh, th these are just very preliminary uh, results. Hello, Giuseppe. So he sees that he, he's frozen. I don't know. So maybe we need to, to wait uh, a moment till he, he gets a better connection. Uh, Alicia, Luca, can you can you see properly Giuseppe? No, he's no, frozen, no? He's the same, yeah. he's frozen. No, he's frozen. He's frozen. Okay. Probably he lost the connection. Okay, let's see if he's coming. Yeah. yeah. Probably he's disconnecting and trying to connect again. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in any yeah. case, it is almost. It's finished. almost finished, no? Yeah. yeah but it is going to be a, a pity not to, yeah. to, to finish. So it's let's let's wait one minute because. That that the uh, slide is the last one. Yeah, so we we it's, are good on uh, we are good on time. some references and uh, messages and perspectives for to take mm -hmm. home. Yeah, but okay. but it's almost finished. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's a non prepared break. Yeah. <laughs> wait for wait a little bit for him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I I see if. Uh, Mm -hmm. Okay, they're asking me we can share the last slide, but I don't I don't have it. I don't know if you have it, uh, Alicia. Al Alicia, do you have the yeah. the last the slide? Yeah, yes, I have it. Do you want? Yeah, wait. Yeah, maybe, was... maybe you can. Yeah, I can share. Wait a little bit, but I will open it. I have uh, it in, in PDF. Okay. Yeah, so, let's... Uh, yeah, I see. I also have I it. will go to the, to the last slide, this. Okay. Um, I will try to share uh, this, this one. But it's in PDF, so I cannot change it. It's, this is the last one. Can you see? Just one second. Uh, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So, so me, is, me, maybe you can the, you can present it and yeah. And this continue. is the last one. The last uh, uh, the last slide of uh, Pino Lembo. Uh, it, the main limits are then the low number of uh, 
of uh, papers that uh, can be used for the study that he, he carried out. And there are uh, some effects of the, of the problems that we had uh, before with the COVID and the, the war. So there is, it is not easy to get all the documents for the, the, the study that he carried out. And uh, he, he wrote some messages and perspectives uh, to, to bring home. <laughs> uh, so uh, is uh, the demand of organic products in the European Union is still a niche market. I don't know how to say niche, it's if it's niche or <laughs> niche, niche market. Niche. So it is it is very small, still very small, perhaps a, bit, a little bit higher for fresh, freshwater fish, but not that much for marine water fish. And for mollusk, uh, the market is still very, very low. Uh, there was a, a need uh, to, to communicate and uh, and do some uh, campaign to support and to, to 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 show the benefits of these organic uh, aquaculture products uh, for pu public bodies and for the customers and uh, there are some uh, 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 the regulation of the European Union are quite strict and perhaps needs some uh, simplification of some of the regulations for example as Pino said uh, the juvenile production is very low because the regulation of the European Union is very strict and that does not allow to produce phytoplankton or rotifers. So the, uh, the regulation of the European Union needs to be uh, simplified and, and look for more research. Finally, Pino was presenting some uh, references for further reading. Uh, reading. Uh, there is a book that uh, we produce uh, that is called Organic Aquaculture. Uh, the editors are Giuseppe Lembo Elena Mente. And uh, cover all the all the all the aspects of organic production, since uh, from reproduction, juvenile production, health, welfare, everything. You know, nutrition, especially, there is a, a chapter dedicated to nutrition. So, and there is, uh, of course, this the European regulation that uh, you can open it, and it's in different uh, languages. So it's in Spanish, French, German, uh, whatever you can find, and you can read the whole. A regulation and see what are the rules and the, the strict rules that they have. So, and uh, that's all. Okay, so <clears throat> thank you, Alicia, for finishing the, the presentation of uh, Giuseppe, who we expect that uh, will join us uh, soon eh? and will solve the technical problems. Okay, uh, well, I should thank the the speakers eh, for your punctuality eh? so it means that we have a, a good time for for the questions and and debate there has been some few questions in the questions and and debate eh? one was regarding why uh, has been already answered why seaweeds were not uh, used as a raw material in <coughs> in the uh, in the fish uh, tested for trout and it was answered that uh, if I am right at the moment that uh, at the moment of preparing the the trial that was not uh, identified or available eh? so one of my questions which is related with this is uh, the availability of uh, available organic raw materials eh? this has been pointed out by some of you I don't know if ah hello Giuseppe yeah, you said well, it's not. A certain point, uh, <laughs> I, lose. I don't know uh, at what part of my presentation. Well, it was no, just, just at the, very, last, very, the, last, at the very last. We were waiting no. for you, and then oh, finally, sorry. finally, Alicia recovered your presentation and finished your your presentation. So, we, sorry, we, guys. No, do, do not worry. We just uh, started the the debate. I am introducing the the debate. Yeah. And the first question I am asking is uh, related with one question of the attendees, uh, which is regarding the availability of raw materials. Specific, he mentioned that uh, why seaweeds were not using for the trout uh, trial. Mm -hmm. That was answered because it was not available or identified at the moment that the trial was designed. And then I'm asking uh, you, or maybe Irida, because she's working with uh, the production of uh, organic aquafits, if he can, is seen, uh, can give us more information, update about this uh, 
problem or constraints that has been identified for the developing of organic aquaculture. Okay. I don't know if Eli, if... Uh... Yes. So regarding the novel raw materials... Uh... Uh, Feli, could you please uh, switch on your, your video. camera? Yes. Your video? Okay, uh, much better. Regarding the availability of uh, novel raw materials, uh, it's difficult to find a raw material that uh, is available in big quantities that is always available. For example, at the moment, uh, the producer that we find uh, we found for the pea protein, uh, which passed all the quality requirements, uh, that he had a big production, he is not uh, he cannot uh, deliver more pea protein. So it's difficult to find producers to rely on. And that's really important because we cannot, it, it's not right to change all the time the formulation. And also the price of a raw material, it's a big problem because for example, uh, pea protein, the price of pea protein, it's much higher than the price of a fish meal. It's almost, yes, at the moment, it's, almost double at the moment. Wow. The, the organic certified pea protein. Uh, so it's really difficult to introduce into the diets new raw materials and be sure not only for their biological effect on fish, which is really important, and that's why it's important the diets that we designed in Utec Aqua but it's difficult to find raw materials that the aquaculture companies can afford to pay for the feeds and for the aquafeed companies to be sure that they can deliver those feeds based on the availability. Uh, same for fish meal, as I mentioned before, uh, it's really important that now we are allowed to use a uh, fish meal and fish oil uh, from uh, sustainable fisheries and uh, not only because of the price but mainly because of the availability of fish meal and the quality because sometimes uh, we are able to find fish meal but the quality is not that good mm -hmm. I don't know if I've answered all your questions mm -hmm. Well, I think that this is a permanent problem, and for me, I, you have answered properly. May, someone may ask you, I don't know, how much could be the premium for getting a vagina and organic aqua feed, but I think that in the current situation where prices are changing so much and have increased so much, that maybe is not relevant. I, 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 think, I think the yeah. most important is availability, the mm -hmm. availability and the quality of uh, the novel raw materials, because when we were trying, when we were discussing uh, uh, about the no novel raw materials that we're going to use, there were some of them that uh, our quality department said that, no, you cannot use them because they didn't meet all the requirements. So first of all, we need to have an available raw material. The price is high, it's really high, we know that and to pass all the quality test in order to introduce it uh, in, a, in the yeah. feeds. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, thank you, Felix, we should all remember that the, the price of aqua feeds is uh, much higher than the price of other animal feeds. Yeah? Yes. So which makes, in, in this case, more difficult to, I mean, for the consumer, justify uh, an increase of the price of a product that is already more expensive compared with other animal proteins, eh? like the pork or the chicken. Eh? If, if I may say something uh, yes. about the, this issue, that that's true. Um, uh, as we saw in, in our research, the, the, the problem of the uh, costs, the, we, we have two, two, two problems. One is the quality, as Feli said, and the other is the price of this new raw material. 
uh, this, that is extremely important. But I would say that is a problem of scale. That means that the, 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 price, the, the price remain high uh, until uh, we have enough production that justify, um, you know, the, the, the market of uh, new raw material. And uh, we should be able to better use the, uh, how I can say, the struct structural fund which support the fishery and aquaculture. Because uh, in theory, uh, according to the regulation, there is the possibility of subsidies for the producer uh, of feed or raw material in general in aquaculture, but uh, um, uh, the national authority and local authority should uh, uh, use uh, those funds for supporting uh, local production. And uh, according to uh, my knowledge, this is uh, not uh, well done uh, everywhere. But in theory, the possibility of supporting with subsidies producer, it, it is, it, it is over there. So probably uh, we uh, have not enough uh, lobbies, like for example, uh, in uh, uh, other country as, in the past was done for salmon or other uh, important species. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will come back to these questions of the of the markets, uh, Giuseppe, but I have a question for, for Alicia and I think for all of you, for Stelius too, is in the, in the results that you have shared with us, Alicia, you, if I remember well, we have seen that uh, with the the inclusion, uh, the results on the trials were quite good. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues uh, was related with, uh, if I remember well, with a higher content of protein and low, lower content of yeah. fat. And yeah. also maybe that uh, that lower content of fat was related with the lower content of uh, DHA. Or if I'm if I am well. So my question is because maybe on the field trial the results were a little bit different and the results look at a little bit better. If if this lower content of fat could be positive and could give the fish farmer a, a tool to try to decrease uh, let's say fat content if it's too high. Because this is one of the criticisms that uh, fish farm products have uh, received. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, I think that for the in the case of the uh, quality of the fillet in in sea bream, uh, to have lower lipid content is better than because what you look uh, to eat uh, the 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 fillet is to 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 go for proteins, not for fat. So and and some of the complaints of the of the uh, customers related to the aquaculture fish is that they have too much fat uh, in salmon in sea bream and sea bass. All the aquaculture fish usually have more fat than the wild fish. So uh, in this case, the use of this green people protein uh, under the organic uh, uh, use, the content of fat in the fillet was lower. So the quality of the fillet was higher. Okay, so, so it is a very positive point. Yeah. Okay. If I so just add something is that yes, please. That that's correct, but the decrease, especially in uh, uh, valuable fatty acids such as BHA or EPA, is up to a point the percentage of the decrease because then uh, yes, of course, fish is uh, something you eat for its healthy uh, essential oils as well. So we do not want to lose this high percentage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's okay. true. That the problem is that it has lower fat content and also, of course, a lower uh, omega-3 fatty acids. But in any case, uh, if you look for a, a protein content in the fillet, uh, the, the introduction of these uh, ingredients is, improves the, 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 the content of protein. So it's good from my viewpoint, of course. <laughs> okay. 
because I, 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 I don't, don't remember the results at the field trial, um, if the pathosomatic index or the visceral uh, index the, on the field trial was, was different for the, for the experimental trial, because. Uh, the only difference we found is was that the, the fillet in the uh, uh, field trial had higher fat because the, the fish were higher, the fish were 300 grams. And the, the ones that we use in the, in the experimental trial, they had uh, 100 grams, so three times lower. So the difference is that the, the fish in the, in the CKS were collected at the end of the ongrowing and they were very, very big fish, 300 grams fish. So, and mm -hmm. that's why they, they, they have more fat accumulated in the, in the, in the fillet. In, in the fillet, eh? In the muscle, yeah. In, in the muscle, not in the... In, not in okay. the liver, no? Not in the liver, okay, which is a good, a good thing. Eh? Okay, so... I don't know, Luca, you have questions. Probably you don't have because you are part of the research, but uh, I've been following the the yeah. webinar and trying to, to make questions mm -hmm. because I see that the attendees are not... I, mean, not, the, not I see, I, yeah, I see another question from uh, ah, okay. an attendee, and he asked if uh, um, we have calculated the environmental impact, yeah. uh, yes. such as phosphor releases in water that. compared to the non-organic diet. So maybe uh, both uh, Stelio or Alicia can. Uh, no, I I already answered. Answer. I already answered the question that the. Uh, Usually, phosphorus is not measured in the water, and the quantity of phosphorus that can be in the in the in the feed is not that high because the quantity of uh, uh, fish meal derived from trimmings is low. So the the content of phosphorus in the feed and uh, consequently in the water is low. So there is no environmental impact of using this kind of food. Yeah, maybe maybe even the the conventional feed is has higher content of phosphorus because it is usually has a higher content of fish meal and and other uh, other uh, fish other meals. I mean, so the phosphorus is not a problem. Yeah, I already answered. Yeah, if, if and uh, if I can add, uh, I think also the the result we got in field trial in uh, considering, for example, the the general feed utilization where. Uh, and uh, say uh, very uh, well in comparison to standard uh, uh, say yeah. feed the and conversion those, the conversion that the they use of the, the feed yeah, they eat to, much better that that feed yeah that there is no a, residues yeah that is a, a first uh, evaluation i think for uh, feed utilization and also uh, that's i think it's a uh, uh, to evaluate the feed uh, the, the environmental impact of feed uh, of course uh, other uh, factor uh, uh, must be taken into account, for example, the, the availability of raw material, the production of raw material, and in, in this direction, uh, fish meal from trimmings have uh, a low uh, CO2 equivalent, uh, uh, also com compared to vegetable ingredients, for example, so using uh, uh, by product from fish and avocado, so trimmings, that is, uh, I think, is, uh, Good opportunity to reduce the, the environmental impact at the uh, let's say at the at the feed level that feeds represent uh, the the highest uh, uh, impact in, ter in for uh, in terms of CO two equivalent. Mm -hmm. Okay. If uh, well, I have a, a question for Giuseppe because he has pointed out in the main constraints for the development of organic aquaculture production, the requirements the, on the on the norms and legislation that all inputs should be organic certified. And he pointed out uh, the question of the constraint of ensuring the juvenile production under organic uh, norms. Uh, I know that there is a debate on on it related with the manage of the brewstock and the potential on the use of hormones or or not. I don't know if Giuseppe, you can give us some more light about this issue. A microphone, please, Giuseppe.
Thanks for the question. Yes, this okay. is a very controversial uh, issue because, uh, as I said, uh, it is uh, currently very difficult to have the whole production cycle under organic management uh, because uh, one, one of the of the problem is the uh, the availability of juvenile. For example, Galaxy V uh, has the, the whole cycle inside and they produce uh, the juvenile that they need for the ongoing phase. But many other producers, they haven't uh, production of uh, juveniles and uh, and so there is a shortage of, and this is one of, of the reasons for, for which the uh, organic aquaculture do not grow. So while in principle is uh, absolutely uh, right that uh, we should uh, achieve the world production cycle under organic management, maybe uh, we forced uh, at the beginning when the organic aquaculture was still in the infancy, we forced a bit on, on this achievement and this uh, probably became a constraint for, for the development of the organic aquaculture. On the other hand, uh, it is currently uh, still difficult to, uh, to improve uh, the, the production. Uh, what I can say is that recently uh, the, the commission uh, launched uh, um, calls for uh, also find breeding uh, program that are specific for the um, for the organic and probably we expect in the near future to to have uh, more knowledge for the uh, production of uh, new generation of uh, organic uh, juvenile but but I, I still see far this uh, this objective and uh, in the meanwhile uh, we we face uh, i suppose relevant relevant problem for this mm -hmm. probably more than than in relation to the availability of uh, well balanced feeds mm -hmm. uh, i see and what can you tell us about the constraints for the availability of uh, medicaments or drugs? What is allowed or not? That's that's is less uh, from from my point of view, uh, or also uh, listening different farmer and producer. It is less relevant problem because. Uh, I would say that not only in organic uh, uh, aquaculture, but also in conventional aquaculture, uh, there is nowadays much more care for the principle of uh, biosecurity. That means uh, uh, try to avoid to enter in those situations that become uh, dangerous for the spread of, of the seas. For example, that means... Uh, um, having less uh, um, stocking density in the in the sea cage, uh, this prevents the spread of the seas from one side. But at the same time, uh, the effect on the uh, on the flesh on the, on the fillet is better because when the the fish are allowed to freely swim uh, without be crowd uh, also the, the quality of the fillet imp improve so uh, the, the fact that uh, the, 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 there is a, a limitation in the uh, use of uh, antibiotic is uh, not a real problem in addition to this uh, i have to say that uh, the organic uh, roots allow the use of vaccine and nowadays uh, vaccine are the, the most important uh, uh, things against the uh, spread of, of disease. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, 
and the organic regulation allows uh, the the use of uh, functional <clears throat> uh, functional additives. There is a list of uh, additives that uh, are allowed. Um, so there is this possibility, but of course uh, there is not a, a so wide list because the, uh, the, the organic regulation try to maintain few selected additive that are really, really important or for, for technical uh, purposes or for quality purposes. And so the, the, uh, the producer have to, to follow this uh, specific positive, so-called positive list of additives. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I don't know, Luca, if I, I don't have more questions. Well, maybe one question Perhaps. for, uh, yes? Yeah, perhaps uh, we will just open a small debate on the consumer perspective. What is uh, uh, it's a question for the for the company? What is uh, your feeling? How we can perhaps better communicate uh, uh, for the organic culture and how we can promote it? So this question is for Estelius, I imagine, no? Oh, yeah, okay. for Estelius, yes. Yes. Uh... I believe that the perspective, the consumer perspective as a whole, is not up to you know one company to to change the perspective of people. But uh, I think it's more uh, it, it needs to happen in a more coordinated manner uh, from companies, but not only companies, organizations, and uh, even the academic uh, world as well. Uh, but still, the cost limitation of a product that's higher that costs more, uh, that in these more difficult times, in terms of uh, the war in Ukraine or uh, the prices and the inflation, it's it's more difficult to to start a campaign. Mm -hmm. I hope I answered. Yeah, question. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stanis. Okay. Um. Now, now that we are well discussing about the organic production, I well, I uh, apologize because I forgot to to inform about the uh, advanced course that New Tetaqua is organizing this month of October about uh, organic aquaculture. So maybe Alicia, you can briefly introduce to the attendees the the course. Yeah. Although okay. the participation is already closed, but the uh, they, they might be interested to know about this. Yeah, there is a course organized by CIEM in uh, Brindisi in, uh, from the 16th to the 20th of October, so in two weeks. In, and, in, in, tri, in Tricase, no? In Tricase, yeah. Tricasse. Well, I always say Brindisi, but it's the, the city Tricasse. that is closer to... Well, it's in Tricase, yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, well, the, there will be... The, the course is very much better than this one. And uh, we will talk about all the EU, EU regulation, the uh, reproduction and, and uh, selective feeding, uh, the production of juveniles, the pros and cons that we have, uh, nutrition, the, 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 the things that we already have and the, the new uh, fix, that, the new, new ingredients that we need, health, uh, as uh, Pino said, uh, the use of vaccines and the, the, the lower use of antibiotics and the regulation that is already in the in the in the in the, in the uh, EU, and also there is a, a, a one part of the course dedicated to the uh, certification. Naturland will be giving the the talk about uh, the certification of organic production, and also uh, another one about the market market studies for the for this kind of, of products. So all the aspects will be covered in the in the course. Uh, they are already eighteen uh, students already uh, subscribed, and we will be there. Yeah, Pino, me, mm -hmm. Elena Mente, Ingrid Olesen, and several people. Yeah. yeah. Well, I I wish that you have a very successful course. Uh, this course is going so. to be <laughs> uh, organized by our brothers in from Sihan Bari. Eh, eh, Diada Menini is eh, following us, he's from Sihe Ambari. Um, so we wish you all the best in this in this initiative. Eh? So you. I guess that uh, 
as we have half enough time for for discussion maybe we can finish the yes the the webinar but before i just want to <coughs> to share again the screen <clears throat> with you to remember that uh, this month of uh, october we have a very important uh, organization of webinars uh, so and you have the the list uh, this one is uh, on on thursday uh, 5 of october about circular aquafit ingredient ingredients a uh, topic very related with today's uh, topics and you see there the the list of all the webinars that we are going to organize this month of october uh, you have already asked me if the webinars are recorded and will be available Yes, they are recorded. They are available at the new Tetacoa web page. And this webinar that is being recorded uh, will be also available for uh, anyone uh, in the in the web page of the of the project. Uh, so I thank all the panelists very much for the collaboration of the presentations they have done and the attendees for following us. Uh, thank you very very much for following us to today and I wish that uh, your participation answer to the spent uh, well to the spent assessments you have uh, for joining us okay so that that's all and if you are coming back on on Thursday we will meet again okay okay thank you very much uh, so bye bye thank you to all of you Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you to all the attendants. Bye-bye. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. So, when this moment arrives, I'm always afraid that if I'm going to, <laughs> to stop the recording properly. Okay, so, the tener grabación. Let's see, let's see what's going on. I want to know when I still start.